Welcome back to Suvida Everything, guys. Today, the roast beef experiment. Check it out. Whenever you mix vegetables with meat and you cook it traditionally, it's always amazing. It doesn't matter if you're braising, pan frying or even grilling. Because the temperature is always high, it allows the vegetables to break down and that's one of the reasons stocks taste amazing. You're breaking down all the vegetable and extracting all the flavor. However, with sous vide, it works completely different because you're not trying to extract flavors from the vegetables. What you are trying to do is make your meat very flavorful. And to do that, we cook it at very low temperature. Now, the interesting thing is when you cook cook everything in such low temperature, the vegetables do not extract any flavor from them. So this got me thinking about this experiment. Is it better to put vegetables in your bag when you're cooking for a long time? Or is that just gonna make it worse? I've honestly never done any experiment like this and today we're gonna find out. So let's do it. And for today's cook, I'm gonna be using this beautiful eye round. By no means is this an amazing meat. However, one thing that it got going for it is that it's cheap. And we all already know that sous vide makes cheap cuts amazing. That is a fact. Now here's a big tip, never wash your meat. Always start off by extracting the juices, open the bag up and pat it dry. You don't need to rinse it with water or anything like that. It does not do you any good. The only thing that it actually does, it transmits bacteria to your sink, especially with poultry. So never wash your meat. Once I was done patting it dry, this is what it looks like. Here's another interesting thing. You see that little spot on the top? Just like a brisket, whenever they're sealing the eye round, they use hot water for it. And ultimately what that means is that when they were doing the cryovac, it got a little hot. That right there with a few other parts must be trimmed. And what I mean by that is this loose fat, connective tissue, silver skin, they all gotta go. And to do it, it's pretty straightforward. Just grab your knife and work slowly. Try to take out the fat and connective tissue, but leave the meat behind. The slower you do it, the more precise your cuts will be. Just make sure your knife is sharp. But once I was done trimming, this is what your eye round should look like. Do not remove all the fat. You want to leave it at least a quarter inch thick on the top. As we all know, fat is flavor, friends. And the unfortunate thing about the eye round is that it does not have that much. To make this experiment valid, I must cut it in half. And when I did, this is what I'm talking about. There's no fat. But now that we have two pieces, one of them will be cooked with vegetables and the other one won't. Since they come from the exact piece of meat, there is no variation. One of the important things whenever you're cooking sous vide for a very long time is that you will not be able to sear after. So even though I'm against pre-searing steaks, for roasts, I definitely recommend it. And to give it a nice fast pronounce here, the best way to do it is with a flamethrower. So let's do it. Now that we finish it up with a sear, the next thing to do is to season them and for that I kept it simple with salt, freshly ground black pepper and garlic powder. This is a big chunk of meat, make sure you season it well. Also don't forget to lay a tray on the bottom so you can catch all that seasoning. You don't want to let that go to waste. And that old saying which says that searing meat locks in juices is absolutely not true. When I tell you that the salt will definitely penetrate, it will. But now that we got them seasoned, it's time for our vegetables. And I started off with a combination of yellow onions, then of course we moved into celery and also carrots. The only thing I try to keep in mind is to keep the vegetables all at the same size. And whenever you braising anything, this is the most popular vegetables to use. It's also called mirepoix. And if you don't know about it, one thing that you should is that it produces an amazing flavor. Just to take it to another level, I'm also going to be adding tomato paste. Whenever I'm braising something, I always add it and it makes it taste amazing. But now all there's left to do is to bag everything up and get ready for the water bath. So after adding the meat, I throw in the vegetables, followed by the tomato paste. Vacuum packed everything up and they were ready. I'll be cooking everything together in the the same container at 135 degrees Fahrenheit for 24 hours. And I really can't wait to find out which one is gonna be best. I got my beautiful meat cooked everybody at 135 degrees Fahrenheit for a total of 24 hours. That should give us a nice, perfect, medium, rare, soft, hopefully soft 
roast beef. I can't wait to find out what it's gonna taste like. And I can't wait to find out if the vegetables have actually done anything. Because as I mentioned on the video before, the temperature is not enough to extract all those flavors from those, uh, you know, vegetables. Normally when you boil it, you're able to extract because the temperature is high and everything just comes out on the broth. But with this such a low temperature, there's only one way to find out. I say enough talking and let's take it out. Let's do it. All right, everybody, there's a lot of things going on in here and I'm gonna try to explain as best as I can. First of all, this right here is the one with the vegetables. This one here is the one without it. When we open up the bag, these are the amount of juices that were collected. I could tell you right off the bat that the one without the vegetables had more juice. I think what happened is some of the vegetables absorbed those juices, so we ended up with less juices on this one here. And on top of that, my vegetables are not cooked at all because of the low temperature. Nothing happened to the vegetables. Now, did it produce a little bit more flavor on the meat itself? I'm not quite sure. Did the flavor penetrate it into the meat at such a low temperature? I have no idea. And the only way to find out is to actually taste it. Another thing, normally when you're making a sauce, you actually put some water in it and let it reduce down so that you can get an amazing flavor with it. There's no need to do that in this case. We don't need to reduce these sauces right here. Why? Because there is nothing. It's 100% juices from the actual meat. Uh, you can, if you want to, put some type of thickener, such as like, you know, a cornstarch slurry or maybe a, a flour and thicken up the sauces. But I really want to taste the sauce with its own taste without anything else to give you guys a nice fair review. All right, everybody, here we have our beautiful roast beef. What do you think, Mama? Roast beef. Roast beef. Wow. Spend all the money on the Wagyu. Spend all that money on the Wagyu. There's no more money, so we got to do some roast beef. No, I but at the same time, I mean, it's good. You know no, what I mean? I love roast beef. Yeah, it's something for. I know you're joking. I know you want some Wagyu, though. He's like, you know when you make a joke and then there's a little truth in the end? That's what you're trying to do? <laughs> yeah, just a little. All right, with all that being said, why would you ever try to cook sous vide roast? Because of this, everybody, the juiciness that comes out of this thing is absolutely impressive. And most importantly, it's still medium rare in the middle. You guys know already, there's one way to make an, ex an inexpensive cut of meat taste good, it's with sous vide. Absolutely, so, I agree 100%. Roast beef is the perfect way to test it. And I challenge you to cook something medium rare and tender with this temperature, with this doneness, without sous vide. Prove to me it's done, it can be done. It can, it's humanly impossible. I think we're talking a lot and it's time I to try it, right mama? Ready to go. Simple enough, we wanna see if there's any flavor that, oh my God, it is tender. I can tell you that right now. <laughs> it is tender and that's why sous vide is perfect for this application. Ready mama Zing? All right. All right, cheers, cheers. everybody. That is extremely tender. Good little crust. I can tell that you pre-seared it. Yeah, right? put some nice uh, char on that thing. Yeah. <laughs> exactly what it's expected, everybody. Easy to make, it doesn't get any simpler than that. Okay, second one, you ready? You went for another one, oh, you're gonna yeah. resist. No, why are you explaining to them? I'll go for you were like, Google is talking too much, I'm just gonna go ahead and chop it up. <laughs> and there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. All right, second one, everybody. Cheers, everybody. Hmm. It's a piece of the same steak. You think so? Yeah. I think it's a little bit less flavorful, Mama. I think it's a little bit diluted or something like that. What do you think? I think this one here without any vegetables was more flavorful than this one. Your opinion? You tell me. You tell them what you think. I was going to say it's a little bit maybe juicier, but that it's part of the steak. You cannot really judge that. I don't think it's juicy at all. I think it's just diluted, everybody. Putting the vegetables in. Don't get me wrong. All right, let me just stop right there. 
I absolutely love vegetables. I'm not even close to my nephew Angel, yeah, which is a real, true vegetable hater. I love vegetables, but because it's such a low temperature, what it did is it extracted the juices and it just put it on the vegetable itself yeah. so that it can drown itself in juices and took it away from the meat itself. So if you ask me which one is better, absolutely don't put anything inside of the bag. But now I can't wait to find out if the actual juices, which one tastes better. Okay. I see you're going for a... I'm, I'm trying to grab a carrot over here, but the carrot is fighting back. It's hard. Try, try it's the hard. carrot. I bet you it's raw. <laughs> you need to say nothing, mama. That crunch, I hope you came through the camera. Set it out. I'll tell you what. It's uh, flavorful. It's bla <laughs> of course, you took all the juices mm. away from the actual meat. But it's not flavorful like a steak, it's flavorful like tomato. Like to oh, because it has a tomato paste. Ah. Now let's try the jus itself, yeah, Mama? Let's do it. Jus time, everybody. Cheers. Yes. All right, right off the bat, with the juices, it's a lot better. It's a huh? lot better. <laughs> right off the bat, like there's no comparison at all. That is amazing. All right, everybody, second one. Cheers, Cheers everybody. Oh. oh, I don't like that. No. Oh, I don't like that at all. I thought that this was going to be better because, you know, it got it had all the out of yeah. there. Yeah. Wow. Yes. No, 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 I no, think no. today, Andrew is probably looking at this video and laughing. <laughs> He's like, you see, I told you vegetables, but that's not that good. For this application, everybody, I 100% recommend you not putting any vegetables in the bag. Do you agree, Mom? 100%. I don't think I was going to agree, but I do. That is surprisingly good. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> Only one way to find out if something works is for us to try it, and we'll do the experiment for you so you don't have to, everybody. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I, if you do enjoy it, make sure you give it a thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber, be sure to subscribe for future videos. Remember, if you are interested in anything I use, everything is always in the description down below. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you guys on the next one. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.